Welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist at Fonson Porter. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to put together the pieces that make patchwork pups. You'll also want to find the pattern and you can visit our website for that. Now, as we look at the, the block, you can notice right away that we have a puppy dog. And so the shape that's created in that is done with all um, fabric that's coming from two inch, two and a half inch strips. And as we work through our pieces, we're using a bundle here of 1930s reproduction fabrics, pre-cut, and we're using one consistent light fabric as the background. So from those strips, you'll want to follow um, your instructions and your pattern for the lengths and squares needed for um, the cutting of squares or off the 30s prints and your background fabrics. Now when I was preparing the pieces, I realized there are quite a few different shapes in the um, light background. So you'll want to use either a post-it note or a sticky dot. Just label those A through H or I, however letter, many letters are in there. It will help you so you won't have to refer back to the pattern for the dimensions each time. It helps us keep um, organized. So at the very beginning, we are going to create the section in the block that is his tail and along his neck. So this piece right here is the piece that we're going to be working on. So working with a light background rectangle and we're going to be using square um, a print. We're going to mark diagonally corner to corner and you can use um, your favorite marking tool or um, a mechanical pencil. And it's just a simple light line diagonally across the block. This is going to be your stitching line. Whoops, a pencil there. Like that. Okay, now we're going to be, if you look again, always go back to your diagrams, it's a great reference. They're going to put, be putting them on opposite corners along one of the long sides of the block. So we're going to be putting them on like this. Well, I guess I'm placing them so they look just like what you're seeing. Like this. And then they're going to open out. Always do the double check. Make sure that you have them oriented correctly because if you have it oriented like this, it's not going to come out quite the way you want in the end. So we're going to, we would attach these with a straight seam and simple sewing as we go to the machine. Now for most of these things that are small like this, we probably wouldn't need um, to put a pin in, but if that's your comfort zone, do so at this point. And then sew right on the pencil line, corner to corner. There's a lot of sewing in this um, well, so you're going to want to take the time to press your seams. Always come to the iron, press, get the fibers warm first, and then open out the, for the diagonal seams method, your corners like this. So it creates this. And here we have one with one on, but we need the second one. So we have his tail and then along the back of his neckline. So we're going to add that second triangle and you see here, I've trimmed away the, the um, seam allowance underneath. We don't need all three thicknesses in our quilt. So we would come in here and you can use a scissors or a rotary cutter. And you just leave approximately a quarter inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exact at this point, but you're going to reduce and take out that triangle and you do it on both sides. So this is the unit for that, uh, the steps for that part of that unit. Next, we're going to create the piece that goes here that is next to his nose. And it requires a background rectangle fabric and a square that we are, again, doing the same diagonal seams method we did in the first piece. Mark diagonally across your fabric, place it onto the, rec the rectangle background, and you're going to stitch diagonally across like this, making sure that, again, Position, it looks just like the diagram or the quilt block in the quilt. So we're going to create those. And I have one of those already. No, I don't have one prepared. So we'll stitch one of those. Oh, it was underneath. <laughs> okay, so we have the piece that goes right above his nose. Next, we, we need to create pieces that will create his ear and the chin of the um, dog. So these pieces are created with 
a background square, a print square, again, diagonal seam method, mark corner to corner, stitch and take away part of that triangle, like we did right there, press out, and we will create ones for his chin and the pieces for his ear. Assembling a dog is so much fun. So here we go. Now we need to create the block that goes under his chin and kind of the neck piece here. You look at that one and go, hmm, it looks a little bit familiar, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that. So what we do is break it down. We're going to use three pieces this time, a background square, and a piece for the neck here. And then lastly, we're going to bring in another square of fabric, which is this part of his chin. We're going to work with these two squares first. We're going to take these, mark them with the diagonal seams, just like you've been doing. You're going to get really good at this process. You're going to mark like this, and then you're going to stitch across that diagonal, corner to corner, press and trim away the underneath triangle. So you're going to create this piece. But that's not the same as this yet. There's one more step we need to add. We need to add that piece that creates his chin. So we're going to use one more triangle. And the trick is to get, keep the orientation the same as you see in your diagrams and your pattern. So I'm going to align this with the print here, the background fabric, and I want to get this triangle in place. So what I do is I put a square on here of print, mark from corner to corner, do my double check. Voila, I will create that piece by stitching now corner to corner across this. You will trim away this unused triangle so that your piece will look like this. Your underneath triangle is trimmed away and when you open it up you've got the piece then for his neck and it near his chin. Now, we need to create pieces that go into the body of our puppy. So what we need to do is we get to go into our 30s strips and we get to pick out four strips that we would like to put into a strip set. And this is the fun part where you can put together four that you like and um, create these kinds of strip sets. Follow the directions for the number of strip sets you need to create. And then when you've got them all done, created, I, what I do is to cut a lot because there's a lot of pieces here, is I would stack them up. It's easy to, to cut one at a time through one layer, but once you get a little more comfortable in your, in your sewing and your cutting abilities, we always look for shortcuts. So we're gonna stack these up. Now, if they weren't aligned here yet, I would overcut which means I'm gonna make a little bit wider than a two and a half inch strip is, because that's the size I actually want in the end. So here I would come in and I would just overlay it a little past the two and a half inch mark. Come in and make a clean cut. And if you've moved your strips around, say you, you were sewing at night and you came back the next day and moved everything, you might wanna stack up the strip sets like that again to make sure that you get nice clean even cut. And you would proceed down the strip set, cutting more and more pieces. Okay, so now that yields three strips like this. And if we're going to orient them so that you, you can see them exactly like the um, block that's already made, we would put them together like this. So then join rows together and press to make sure you keep all your seam allowances nice and flat. So then you can create the centerpiece or the body of your dog or puppy. Okay, we've got everything created except for his feet. We need to come in and make this unit here. And that is an easy one with a rectangle of background fabric and two squares. Now it's puppy assembly. <laughs> so what we're going to do with all of our pieces, and I would probably, if I were making this at home, I would go through and I would make all of the units, the required units um, for the entire quilt and have them all stacked up. And then I would go down and make one block at a time. It helps you keep oriented. So everything stays nice and tidy.
Okay, so now we're going to create the block. There's his tail, the back of his neck. The block goes in here for this. Then we're going to join his feet. Oh, we had pieces for his head. Now we have a lot of pieces that went into his head. So it's about laying those out properly. So it's all about orienting the, the pieces. And, and it uses a square. I didn't pull that out right away. We do need a square to go in the center of his head. So I'll lay these over the top here so you can see how they align. This piece, his chin, the piece that goes into his neck, and the top of his head. Now you would join those pieces together along with a square that goes in the center, and you will create this whole unit that becomes his head. Now we're not missing too much. We're missing a piece here. There's a background piece that goes in right here. And we have just about everything done, except that we add sashing, shorter pieces side to side first, and then the top and the bottom. You'll have so much fun creating each of your puppies with its own personality. As you can see, they're joined here with sashing pieces made from the strip sets that we cut earlier when we were cutting pieces for the body. We also will cut extras according to the directions that go into the sashing that go throughout the quilt to connect the blocks. For more of our video tutorials, visit our website. Thank you.